بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا وقائدنا وقرة أعيننا محمد المصطفى المرتضى المجتبى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تلا قال المؤلف رحمه الله said the author may Allah have mercy upon him والسؤال حق and the questioning on resurrection day is true so the author here he started talking about matters that are proven by the prophet's conveyance not by an intellectual proof الشرح the explanation بقوله تعالى that is due to what god said exalted is he لنسألنهم أجمعين I swear I will indeed ask them all doesn't say where the ayah is وليقوله عليه السلام and that is due to the prophet saying عليه الصلاة والسلام إن الله يدني المؤمن يوم القيامة فيضع عليه كنفه وسطره so يعني very loose translation here uh, so Allah Ta'ala uh, it grants the slave a certain status on resurrection day this believing slave and he protects him so that's very loose translation there so the Arabic has, is much more meaningful than that translation and he says to the slave questioning the slave do you know of such and such sin that you committed and so the slave says indeed I do O Lord until God makes him confess to all of his sins and the slave sees that he's doomed that's when God says to him exalted is he I covered those sins for you in the earthly life and I forgive them for you today for your kitab hasanati and then the slave will be given his book of good deeds and as for the disbelievers and the hypocrites fayunada alayhim ala ru'usil khala'iq their case will be shouted out their case shall be called out uh, for all of the creations to hear it would be said they are those who lied on their lord lo god damn the unjust lo means uh, an expression of drawing attention like hear ye or something like that al-bukhari narrated that hadith wal muradu bi-zhalimin al-kuffar and what's meant by the unjust is the blasphemers themselves li anna al-kufra huwa a'zam al-zulm because blasphemy is the greatest injustice وَمَا سِوَاهُ بِالنِّسْبَةِ لَهُ فَكَأَنَّهُ لَيْسَ بِظُلُمْ And anything, anything else in comparison is as if it is not even injustice. Any other injustice in comparison to blasphemy is as if it's not unjust. That's how horrible is the injustice, how heinous is the injustice of blasphemy. قَالَ الْمُؤَلِّفُ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ وَالْحَوْضُ حَقُّ the author, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, and the basin is true. 
الشرح the explanation الحوض مكان أعده الله أعد الله فيه شرابا الحوض مكان أعد الله فيه شرابا لأهل الجنة the basin is a place in which God has prepared a drink for the people of the garden. يَشْرَبُونَ مِنْهُ قَبْلَ دُخُولِ الْجَنَّةِ They drink from it before entering the garden. وَبَعَدَ مُجَاوَزَةِ الصِّرَاطُ And after crossing the bridge. So that's a saying there. This is the position our Shaykh took. This is not what all the scholars said. Is the basin before the bridge or after the bridge there is some conflict in the references so then uh, the scholars are going to take one position or another here and not take the other yani they're going to take one position or the other so our sheikh takes the position that yani he deems strong that the basin is after the bridge فَلَا فَلَا يُصِيبُهُمْ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ ظَمَأْ And then no thirst will befall them after that. They will never be thirsty again after that. وَيُصَبُّ فِيهِ مِيزَابَانِ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ Two pipes that come out of paradise. Uh, empty into the basin uh, so then that proves that it's after the bridge but there's a report that some people will be going to the basin and then they will be swept away from the basin and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he would say my companions and then he would be told that they committed those ones who got swept away, they committed blasphemy. So if they committed blasphemy, means they never got over, they never got across the bridge. Because you're not going to cross the bridge on a state of blasphemy. So then, that would mean that the basin is before crossing the bridge if someone who committed blasphemy got close to it. وَقَدْ وَرَدَ فِي وَصْفِهِ مَا رَوَاهُ الْبُخَارِي في صحيحه عن عبد الله بن عمر and uh, concerning the description of this basin there came what al-Bukhari narrated in his authentic book through what he reported through the route of Abdullah bin Amr أنه قال that he said قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hawdi masiratu shahr. My basin is a month across. Ma'uhu abiyabu min al laban. Its water or liquid is whiter than milk. Warihuhu atiyabu min al misk. And its scent is more fragrant than musk. وَكِيزَانُهُ كَنُجُومِ السَّمَاءِ And its cups, the cups around it, are like the stars of the sky. مَنْ شَرِبَ مِنْهَا فَلَا يَظْمَأُ أَبَدًا Anyone who drinks from it will never experience thirst again. ثُمَّ إِنَّ لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ حَوْضًا Furthermore, every prophet has a basin. لَكِنْ حَوْضُ نَبِيِّنَا أَكْثَرُ وُرُودًا However, the basin of our Prophet is approached by many more people because his nation is much bigger than the nation of any other Prophet. قَالَ الْمُؤَلِّفُ رَحِيمَهُ اللَّهِ said the author, May Allah have mercy upon him. وَالصِّرَاطُ حَقَّ And the bridge is true. الشرح الصراط الجسر ممدود The explanation is that the صراط is an extended bridge ممدود على متن جهنم It extends over the surface of hell وقد شهر أنه أدق من الشعر وأحد من السيف 
And it is famous about it that it is sharper or finer than a hair. Finer than a hair and sharper than a sword. أَخْرَجَهُ مُسْلِمٌ مِنْ قَوْلِ أَبِي سَعِيدٍ الْخُدْرِي Muslim produced this description of it from the saying of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, the companion. Wahada kinaya, but this is a figure of speech. Kinayatun an shiddati holihi. It refers to how horrifying this bridge is. Walaysa al-muradu zahira. The literal meaning of the expression is not intended. بَلْ هُوَ عَرِيضٌ Rather, it is wide. لَكِنَّهُ مَزْلَقَهُ دَحَضٌ And it is slippery. That's what we always learn. It's wide and slippery. Someone told me they saw a dream of the bridge and it was like glass. And that person, they told me, they didn't learn before that that the bridge, it's it's wide and slippery. They heard that the bridge is finer than a hair and sharper than a sword. And what they saw in their dream was that it was wide and it was like glass. Subhanallah. So I told them, wow, that's interesting because we learned that it's wide and slippery. They said, wow, wide and slippery? I didn't know. وَأَنْكَرَتِ الْمُعْتَزِلَةُ الْكِتَابِ and the Mu'tazila, they denied the book, meaning being given the book, they denied that, and the scales of justice, and the basin, and the bridge. And their fallacy in denying the bridge is that they said, إذا كان أدق من الشعرة وأحد من السيف If it is finer than a hair and sharper than a sword فإمرار المؤمنين عليه تعذيب لهم Then for the believers to pass over it would be a torture for them Which that's not necessary anyway والجواب أن المؤمنين يعبرون على and the answer to this fallacy is that number one uh, that description is not intended to be taken literally and number two the believers cross this bridge in various ways in various modes some of them fly وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَيْهِ And some of them walk over it. ثُمَّ مِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقَعْ And some of them fall over. يعني some of them fall over the side. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ لَا يَقَعْ And some of them do not fall. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَسْلَمْ Some of them will be safe. حَتَّى يَصِلَ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Until he gets to the garden. لِأَنَّ أَعْمَالَهُمْ هِيَ الَّتِي تَجْرِي بِهِمْ Because their deeds are what makes them stride or makes them run. لَيْسَتْ قُوَةَ الْمَشِي فِيهِمْ It's not any power of walking within them that makes them able to cross the bridge. إِذْ قُوَّةُ الْمُرُورِ هُنَاكَ عَلَى حَسَبِ حَالِهِمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا مِنْ حَيْثُ الْأَعْمَالِ Because the strength of passage there would be depending on how they were in the dunya in terms of their deeds. وَأَمَّا حَمْلُهُمْ لِمَا وَرَدَ فِي بَعْضِ الصَّحَابَةِ عَلَى ظَاهِرِهِ and as for their taking what was reported about or from some of the companions, literally, فَلَا حُجَّةَ فِيهِ There's no evidence therein. Shaykh, I have a question. Yes. Is, is it safe to say that this hadith would be a mutashabih hadith? Uh, what we learned is that it's not 
confirmed that the Prophet said it himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, that this is the statement of that Sahabi. Um, okay. Um, but like that, the wording itself would be mutashabih, right? I don't know if we're going to call it mutashabi since it's not part of the revelation if it didn't come from the Prophet I see what you mean. Okay. Barakallahu I mean wa fikum. Uh but it's not sarih. It's not explicit. Wa amma hamluhum lima warada an ba'di sahabati ala zahirihi fala hujjata fihi. So as for their taking what was narrated about or from some of the companions by what it appears, what appears, what appears, yani taking it literally, fala hujjata fihi. There's no evidence in that literal wording. Wala dalila lahum alayh. And they don't have any proof in it. Waqad qulna inna sawaba annahu fil haqiqati arid. And we have said that what is correct is that it is in reality broad. لَكِنَّهُ مِنْ شِدَّةِ هَوْلِهِ عَبَّرَ عَنْهُ or عُبِّرَ عَنْهُ بِهَذَا التَّعْبِيرِ However, uh, due to how horrifying it is, it was expressed uh, with this expression. فَكَيْفَ بَنَتِ الْمُعْتَزِلَةُ أَمْرَهُمْ فِي إِنْكَارِهِمُ الصِّرَاطَ عَلَى حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِ مَرْفُوعٍ So there's a statement right there from the Shaykh. So how did the Mu'tazila base their issue, base their denial of the bridge upon a hadith that's not even a prophetic hadith? So it's mukuf, stopped at a sahabi. وَلَا هُوَ مُجْمَعٌ عَلَيْهِ And it's not a matter of consensus. وَلَا اتَّفَقَ عَلَى حَمْلِهِ وَلَا تُفِقَ عَلَى حَمْلِهِ عَلَى ظَاهِرِهِ And there is no agreement to take that statement by its apparent meaning. Yani, that statement, by its literal wording, is not strong enough to deny the bridge altogether. So they denied the bridge because they wanted to. قَالَ الْمُؤَلِّفُ رَحِيمَهُ اللَّهِ Yani, it was, it was an excuse for them to do something that they wanted to do. Said the author, may Allah have mercy upon him. وَالْجَنَّةُ حَقَّ وَالنَّارُ حَقَّ and the garden is true or real. And the fire is real. Asharh, the explanation. Al Jannatu wa Naru Mimma Thabatata Biddala ili Samaria til Katuya. The garden and the fire are among what is confirmed by definitive heard proofs. لِأَنَّ الْعَقْلَ لَا يَسْتَقِلُّ بِإِدْرَاكِ ذَلِكَ Because the mind uh, cannot independently realize this fact. Yani the mind alone does not confirm uh, heaven or hell, nor does the mind alone deny heaven or hell. So it is not the proof for its confirmation. وَذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ الْآيَاتِ وَالْأَحَادِيثَ الْوَارِدَةَ فِي بَيَانِهِمَا أَشْهَرُ مِنْ أَنْ تَخْفَى And that is because the verses and the hadiths that came in clarifying both of those, the garden and the fire, are famous, are more famous than uh, what could be hidden. They are too famous to be obscure. وَأَكْثَرُ مِنْ and tuhsa and innumerable and innumerable. Wal muradu bi ithbatihi ma inda ahli al haqi wujuduhu mal an. And what's intended by their confirmation, according to the people of the truth, is their present existence. A and nahuma makhluqatan, meaning that they are both created. Not that they shall be, but that they are. They have been created already. Qala Allahu tabaraka wa ta'ala fil jannah said God, the one who is firmly existing and great and exalted. He said about the garden, u'iddat lil muttaqeen. It is prepared for the God-fearing. That's the 133rd verse of Surat Al-Imran. The evidence being that it's prepared. And here, Tabarak, Tabaraka, 
Tabaraka is a past tense verb. It comes from Albirka and Alburuk. The Birka is the pond, a pond that's a body of water. It's called a Birka because the water settles there. It just stays there. And the Buruk is when the camel kneels down and rests. So it's just sitting there. So the meaning of this Tabarak is God's confirmation, the confirmation of his existence and his everlastingness, his eternality and his everlastingness and his confirmed existence with greatness and exaltation. So it's not easy to translate, really. تبارك وتعالى وأنكرت الملاحدة وجود الجنة والنار and the irreligious ones have denied the existence of the garden and the fire فقالت الفلاسفة the philosophers said خراب هذا العالم شيء لا يصح for this world to fall into ruin is not valid that means they believe this world will go on forever. That's what some of the kuffar believe. Some of them, uh, they say, look at the technology we have now. Imagine what it's going to be like in a thousand years from now. So they don't believe the world will end. And that's like some of the belief behind some things like Star Trek, if you're familiar with that. So they just believe they're going to be living into the future forever and ever and ever. Technology is going to keep getting better. Maybe eventually a human being will learn how to transcend his own body. Once he lo- learns how to use 100% of his brain, he could perhaps transcend his body. وَيَقُولُونَ الْأَفْلَاقُ يَجِبُ أَن تَظَلَّ عَلَى مَا هِيَ عَلَيْهِ إِلَى الْأَبَدِ and they say that the stars and celestial bodies must, they must uh, stay as they are forever. لِذَلِكَ أَحَالُوا وُجُودَ الْجَنَّةِ وَالنَّارِ بِصِفَةِ الَّتِي ذُكِرَتْ بِالنُّسُوسِ الشَّرْعِيَّةِ This is why they deemed impossible the existence of the garden and the fire uh, as per its description that came in the religious documents. قال المؤلف رحمه الله said the author, may Allah have mercy upon him. وهما مخلوقتان الآن موجودتان and both of them are presently created or both of them are created now. Existing. Yani, both of them are created now, semicolon, existing, as sharh, the explanation. Annahu yustadallu ala wujud al-jannati al-an bi qissati Adam wa Hawa wa iskanihim al-jannah. The explanation is that what proves the garden's present existence or what proves that heaven is presently existing or currently existing is the story of Adam and Eve and their being made to reside in heaven. And to take that story to be in reference to some garden on earth, which is like what Christians believe. فَهُوَ مِنْ قَبِيلِ تَلَعُبِ بِالدِّينِ Then this is a case of playing with the religion. Toying with the religion. وَهُوَ مُخَالِفُ لِإِجْمَاعِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And that is against the consensus of the Muslims. أَنَّ الْجَنَّةَ وَالنَّارَ مَخْلُوقَتَانِ الْآنِ مَوْجُودَتَانِ Their consensus that heaven and hell are now created, both present. And that Adam and Eve both lived in heaven. That very garden that the believers have been promised 
to live in in the afterlife. وَلَيْسَ كَمَا زَعَمَ أَكْثَرُ الْمُعْتَزِلَةِ And it's not as most of the Mu'tazila have claimed. أَنَّهُمَا تُخْلَقَانِ يَوْمَ الْجَزَاءِ That both of them shall be created on the day of recompense. It's clear for you. If we use the word heaven, that it still refers to something physical. And it's not merely something spiritual. Paradise and hell are similar to this world in being physically real. Remember, how do you confirm similarity between two things? By substitution. If one thing can replace the other, then they're similar. If they, if one thing cannot replace the other, they're not similar, even if they have the same name. So, if what we want is real physical existence real physical existence, like as real as this pen in my hand, then this world and paradise and hell are similar because that real physicality is confirmed for all of them. Uh, But when it comes to the quality and the intensity of things, then they're not similar. And the lastingness, then they're not similar. قال المؤلف رحمه الله said the author, may Allah have mercy upon him, Baqiyatan la tafnayan wala yafna ahluhuma and everlasting, not perishing, nor do their people perish. Yani, the ayah is in the Quran about the people of paradise and hell staying in there forever is itself a proof for paradise and hell being forever. Because if their people stay there forever, that means that they are forever. And Allah says about the people of paradise and the people of hell in various ayahs, خَالِدِينَ fiha, Forever abiding therein. Then it means that they are themselves everlasting. الشَّرْحُ The explanation is أَنَّ الْجَنَّةَ وَالنَّارَ دَائِمَتَان That the garden and the fire or heaven and hell are perpetual, both of them. لا يطرأ عليهما عدم مستمر ولا غير مستمر. No non-existence happens to them. Not a permanent non-existence, nor a temporary non-existence. It means they don't exit existence ever, not even for a moment. لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى فِي حَقِّ الْفَرِيقَيْنِ Because of what God said about both groups. Exalted is he. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا Abiding therein forever and ever. Abiding therein forever and ever. Yani, when you say خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا that alone means they will be in there forever. And then if you add abada, then it means and ever, forever and ever. So it means it will never come to an end. And as for what some of the irreligious pseudo-Sufis said, مِنْ أَنَّهُمَا يَهْلَكَان يَهْلِكَان وَلَوْ لَحْظَةً That they both perish, even for a moment, تَحْقِيقًا لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى To verify what God said, كُلُّ شَيْءٍ هَالِكٌ إِلَّا وَجِهَا in the 88th verse of Surah Al-Qasas, that means everything shall perish except his wajih. فَهُوَ مُخَالِفٌ لِظَاهِرِ النَّاسِ This claim of theirs is contrary to what appears from the religious texts. وَلَا دَاعِيَ إِلَى الْخُرُوجِ عَنْهِ And there is nothing to demand abandoning what appears from the religious texts about the perpetuity of heaven and hell. 
not even this verse. This verse that they are using. وَقَوْلُهُ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ هَالِكٌ إِلَّا وَجِهَ And when God said this verse, that means everything shall perish except his wajih. لَيْسَ نَصًّا فِي أَنَّ الْمُرَادَ بِالْوَجِهِ الذَّاتُ الْمُقَدَّسِ this is not an explicit verse that the only thing that shall remain in existence is the self of God. Rather, the wajah in this verse is interpreted to refer to God's dominion, which is his attribute of ownership. كَمَا قَالَهُ الْبُخَارِيُّ فِي الصَّحِيحِ just as Al-Bukhari said in his authentic book, Fi tafsiri surat al-Qasas, in the interpretation of Surat al-Qasas, what he said in the interpretation of what uh, Al-Bukhari said about the interpretation yani, yeah, of Surat al-Qasas. Yani, he has a section in his authentic book for the interpretation of the Quran. So when he came across Surah Al-Qasas, he produced this ayah and gave a tafsir. And it's also valid to interpret this in another way. That uh, what's meant by his wajah is كل ما يتقرب به إليه من الحسنات The good deeds that are done for seeking closer status to God closer status وَخَالَفَ فِي هَذِهِ الْمَسْأَلَةِ الْجَهْمِيَةِ and who else dissented in this case the Jahmites وَقَالُوا إِنَّهُمَا تَفْنَيَانِ they said both heaven and hell perish وَيَفْنَى أَهْلُهُمَا and their people perish وَهُوَ قَوْلٌ بَاطِلٌ and this is an invalid saying it is against the book and the sunnah and the consensus. It doesn't even have a fallacy, let alone an argument or proof. Subhanallah, his shaykhs doesn't even have a fallacy. Like, there's nothing they can say to trick you about it. Uh, fallacy means... Uh, something to trick the mind. You said, who was that in their book? They gave a tafsir about Surah Al-Qasas. Imam Al-Bukhari. وَخَالَفَ ابْنُ تَيْمِيَةَ ذَلِكَ And Ibn Taymiyyah opposed that. Yani, he dissented in this case. بِقَوْلِهِ إِنَّ النَّارَ تَفْنَى By saying that hell perishes. In particular, the Jahmites, they said, heaven and hell. وَكَانَ قَبْلَ ذَلِكَ قَدْ قَالَ فِي كِتَابِهِ مِنْ هَاجِ سُنَّةِ النَّبَوِيَّةِ And before that, Ibn Taymiyyah had said in his book, مِنْ هَاجِ سُنَّةِ النَّبَوِيَّةِ إِنَّهُمَا بَاقِيَتَانِ That heaven and hell are both everlasting. لَا تَفْنَيَانِ Not perishing. وَإِنَّ أَهْلَ الْحَقِّ مُتَّفِقُونَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ And that the people of the truth are in agreement to that. وَلَمْ يُخَالِفْ إِلَّا الْجَهْمِيَّةِ And that no one dissented in this case but the Jahmites. فَكَفَّرَهُمُ الْمُسْلِمُونَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ And so the Muslims deemed the Jahmites as blasphemers for that. Ibn Taymiyyah logged all of that. And then he turned around and fell into it. So he's a kafir by his own verdict. It is possible to find Ibn Taymiyyah's judgment of takfir of being judged the kafir in his own verdicts. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. We'll stop there. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.